Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to make a log cabin block. So a log cabin is a traditional block and traditionally has been done um, with the block half and half in different colourways. So maybe a light half and a dark half or maybe some other colours. Um, here I'm just using some leftover fabric strips that I had from another project and they happen to be delicious Hoffman batiks. Um, earlier in the year I did a mystery quilt project and these were the colours I used. And at the end of it I found I had lots of small pieces of the, of the yardage left over after you've cut all your strips. You kind of have to have a little bit more than you need. And so I'm thinking, well, what can I do with those? Well, I can cut those into strips. So to make this log cabin block, you just need some one and a half inch strips. So I've chosen, um, I needed nine colors to make one this size. And I've, so I've cut my nine different colored strips. And I thought, because I've worked on that rainbow theory uh, when I uh, selected the fabrics in the first place for the other quilt, I thought I'd work the same way this time. So what I've done, perhaps I'll do it with these, is I've, I've kind of worked the colours so that they blend through, and if they were to go into a circle, they would kind of start blending back again. So that purple would then blend back into that blue. This isn't a requirement of a log cabin, this is just what I've done with, with mine. So I've started off, so yellow was my centre colour, so I've started with the yellow in the centre of my block and I've worked around and when you make a traditional log cabin, so we've pieced it in a traditional way with it going in rounds. So you start in the middle and you put your next piece which is going to be the same size to it. In fact we're going this way and then you add on the next piece that goes across and then the next piece and the next piece. So you work in rounds, not out sort of one side or the other. So with, with, as I said we've started cutting the strips of fabric initially into one and a half inch strips and then I've cut the pieces down. I've already cut my pieces ready to show you to do the piecing um, and there is going to be a, a pattern sheet available for you to download uh, no charge for this. It's a free download if you're wanting the instructions for how I've made just the block. It's not for a whole quilt, it's just for a block. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So, so initially we're going to start off with our centre square and we're going to put our next piece to it. So on the pattern sheet, all the pieces are numbered and they're numbered in the order that you would piece them together. So you start with number one, then you take number two and all the, the cutting instructions on that sheet are all um, including a seam allowance, a quarter so we'll inch seam allowance. So we'll come to the machine and we'll do a quarter inch seam allowance for that first seam, just a short seam. Now there's lots of different ways of constructing log cabin blocks. You'll find that lots of books will give you different ideas. Sometimes they're foundation pieced, so pieced onto a foundation cloth. Um, sometimes they're just strips and you just join them until you get to the end of the, the piece and then you cut it off. I like to pre-cut all my strips to the length that, that they should be. And I find I get a better result doing it that way. So I've joined my centre to my next piece. I've pressed the seam towards the colour. And so now I'm going to put my next num piece number three on. So this is one, two, and then I've got piece number three all ready to go here. And so what, what I like to do is put the piece that I've just attached, the last piece I've attached, away from me. And then I'm going to lay that on top, right sides together, and I'm going to come and sew that piece on over those two. So this is also another little exercise in case it interests you to be accurate with things. You would find that things need to fit but there's a lot of seams in this block and if your quarter inch seam allowance is slightly out you'll notice it when you do something like this so that may not bother you you might want to trim things to make them fit if it bothers you it's a good example of of a way of working with something to see how it goes I'll just bring this back and press it i like to press each time i've sewn another piece on again into the color always press into that new piece that you've just put on so we've now we've got one, two, three. So again, I turn piece three away from me and now I'm going to put piece four on and we're now coming around into the next color. Same sort of thing. So I think you're getting the hang of this. I'll just do a couple more pieces and then I won't make you watch me sew every strip on. We'll have a little chat about the rest of it. So it's quite handy to have an iron handy when you're doing this, although I quite like moving around. Normally my iron isn't right next to me and I have to get up and walk all the time. 
Okay, so we've done piece four now, we're going to add piece five, and this is going to complete the round. And so the pieces change length, of course, as they get bigger going around, and all of that information is on that downloadable sheet. So there we've got the centre part of our block. So if we're looking at this block here, we're going to it should now match up to this bit here in the centre. And so all the colours just need to be continued to be added in that same manner. You just the last one you've put on, if you put it away from you, and the next one goes down the side, and so on and so on as you get bigger and bigger. So that you can see how that block's going to go. I have, as you can see, already done a block here. So we can just talk about how things are going. I, I've continued on in the same manner and I've added all my strips now. My last strip is the longest strip because it just goes across, right across one end. So this block, using all these one and a half inch cut strips, measures nine and a half inches. So it's going to be finished at nine inches when it's in a quilt. So I'll talk a little bit now about how log cabin block can work with that kind of half light, half dark or different color scheme that you've got. You've got a few options with settings and things. So we'll have a little play while we're here. So we might say put all this ready purple colors into the center. And of course, if you had lots of blocks that could get bigger and bigger, and you'd end up with this being a stripe if you continued in the same layout, you might think, oh, that's a little bit much purple in the middle. What if we want to put more emphasis on the blue? So we might turn them around that way. So you've kind of got options within that. There's other things you could do. You could have them so that you kind of, I'm hoping you can see all this, you kind of get this little um, sort of pointy bit going in a direction. So you could do rows like that. You could do them so that you end up with, um, let's get this right, diagonal sort of um, stripes. Is that working? So that you get this color going that way and then that stripe diagonally would come through in the other colorway or the lights and darks. So there's lots of different ways of playing with a log cabin block and you can use them as separate blocks. I thought these were quite fun because they're so colorful and they are pretty much in your face colorful. And I quite like the idea perhaps of having a white fabric as a spacer in between and just treating them as an individual block. So I might do a sashing in between. Um, which of course brightens them up a little bit with this white. However, I quite liked the idea of a quilt like that with them spaced out with sashing in between. So there's lots of different ways to play with a block like that. You could do it in, um, in rounds of color. There's so many ways to play. Uh, so that was really just to show you how to construct it and the fact that I like to cut my strips the right length so that everything fits at the end because I've now got some nice straightforward flat blocks that measure the right size rather than if you just sew on strips and just cut off without having measured them first sometimes there's a little bit of movement or stretch in the fabric and things can go a little bit um, wonky so I didn't want wonky so I went and did it that way so as I said on my website gourmetquilter.com um, under the freebie section you'll find that you can download this pattern if that interests you to do so and so that was the log cabin block thank you